right, hello. Welcome back to my channel. Today we have another episode of Wicked Wednesday. It has been so long since I've done a Wicked Wednesday. I'm super excited to do one again and I hope you guys enjoy it. So if you're new to Wicked Wednesday, this is where we talk about a spooky story every Wednesday on my channel. It's been quite a few Wednesdays since I've done one. Sometimes it's every Wednesday, sometimes it's whenever I feel like it. That's the great thing about being subscribed to me is I'm keeping you on your toes. So today we're gonna to be talking about the Wolfgang Brothers, also known as the Wolf Pack. So I believe you pronounce their last name, the Angulos. Um, hopefully I'm saying that right because I'm not sure that I am. There are six brothers, six brothers, that's a lot of brothers. So the Angulo Brothers, they're from Manhattan's Lower East Side, which is in New York, obviously. And they had quite a rough start. These brothers were trapped in their New York apartment for 14 years. 14 years and I saw this story on TikTok and I was like I have to do a Wicked Wednesday on this because this is wild. I had never heard of this story before but it just it caught my attention and now I can't go back. So the Angulo brother's father he basically was this hippy dippy dad and he wanted to shield his children from the horrors of the real world. So what did he do? He locked them in their apartment and they were not allowed to leave ever. Like ever, ever, ever. So they lived in a four bedroom flat, again, on the Lower East Side of Manhattan. They had an older sister as well. And they never were allowed to step foot outside of this apartment because their dad was so paranoid about the world. Could you imagine being trapped in your home for 14 years, like never leaving? I mean, I can imagine doing that for maybe six months. Thank you, America. <laughs> Coronavirus, am I right? <laughs> so they were locked so far in this apartment that some of their neighbors didn't even know that they existed. There's seven children living there and their neighbors had no idea that they were there. Their mother was also kept locked up, which is awful. On the rare occasions that they were allowed to go outside, they were told they weren't allowed to speak to strangers. So they couldn't talk to anybody and tell them they really didn't even know better that they weren't supposed to be outside of their apartment. You know, they, they had no idea what the real world was like. They just thought that that's how you know, it was supposed to be like they weren't supposed to leave. That's what they were taught. So why would they think otherwise? They weren't even allowed to so much as make eye contact with strangers, which is just so horrible. I mean, could you just imagine living such a sheltered life like that? I, I really can't. I mean, the quarantine nearly took me out. Their dad was super overprotective. It was nothing more than that. He was super paranoid. He was super overprotective. He didn't want anything to happen to his kids and he didn't want them to be exposed to the real world. Gotta let them fly at some point, right? Like you gotta let them out of the nest. You would want your kids to go out in the world and succeed, right? The only glimpse of the outside world that these kids had was a huge collection of movies and DVDs and things like that of over 5,000 films that their dad kept for them. So they were allowed to watch movies and TV and stuff like that. And that's really the only exposure and knowledge that they had of the outside world at all. These kids would squish together on a mattress on the floor and watch these movies over and over and over again because that's all they had to do. I mean, they couldn't go anywhere. They couldn't do anything. They, it was a small apartment and they weren't allowed to leave. So what else would they do? but watch movies. Even though their father let them watch TV, he told them, don't believe anything you see. These are just movies, they're made up. It's not what real life is like. And he just kind of sheltered them horribly. But these kids were smart and the basically escapism that they felt through watching these movies was enough for them. I'm about to go real ham with this concealer. It's been a week. There was a movie made about these children called The Wolf Pack. Uh, it is like a docu-series kind of deal. You can watch it. I plan on watching it myself. I have not watched it yet, but I'm going to. So basically the story began in the late 80s. The mother met the father on a trail to Machu Picchu. Believe it or not, weirdly enough, they were on some grand adventure when they met. She was a young American from the Midwest and she was very adventurous. So she was on a little trip to Machu Picchu and she met this guy, the dad, the crazy one. And he was an aspiring musician and he was uh, from Peru. So they fell in love, moved to the United States together. She was already from there, but he was not. So they both went to the United States and they wanted to start their life together. They first moved to West Virginia and then for a brief period of time they were in California and then they eventually ended up in New York. Their housing options when they moved to New York were very limited. It was pretty much based just on the mom because he didn't want to work. 
he refused to work for a living and their options were pretty slim and we all know that New York is not exactly the cheapest place to live so I'm sure that whatever they had was the bare minimum. So in the mid 90s, they ended up on this really beat up flat apartment on the 16th floor of a very large public housing block. They started a family. So the oldest brother, they all have very unique names that I'm probably going to butcher, so I'm sorry in advance. The oldest daughter, her name is this new, and she has Turner syndrome, so that's like a genetic disorder. Then all of the brothers came, the six brothers. So Bhagavan was the first brother, and then there are twins, so Govinda and Narayana, I believe is how you say it, followed by Mukunda, Krishna, and Jagadesh. I'm pretty sure that's how you say their names. If not, I am so sorry. Basically, after they had all these kids, at some point down the line, the father just decided that it was too unsafe for his family to venture out into the real world because he was afraid of them dabbling into drugs, falling victim to crime because they didn't live in the nicest area, and he forbid them from venturing out of the apartment freely. He told them that people were just out to get them, people in the real world didn't have good intentions, and they were to be warned of that. And the wife basically agreed because she didn't want her kids to be exposed to that, and she thought what better time to kind of teach them this than when they don't know any better. The thought behind was this was to let them become who they are without tainting them with other philosophies or religions or crime or drugs out in the real world. He wanted them to become who they are before they were kind of released into the world so that they already had an understanding. And to some degree, I kind of understand it. I mean, I, I understand what he was trying to do, but Dude, you gotta set him free. So at first he was just leaving the front door locked and he was the only one who had the key. So nobody basically could enter or exit without him. Um, and the children even needed Oscar, who's the father's name, they needed his permission to even enter or leave the room. Really, really harsh, harsh rules in my opinion. The family, again, was not well off. He did not work for a living, so they were on welfare and he was the only one who ventured out to get food or things that they needed. So he would just go out for food. He would get new movies for his kids to watch, which, you know, I'm glad he tried to keep them entertained because he locked them in their home. Um, the mother, Suzanne, homeschooled the children. She claimed that she lived under even worse rules than the children and she was very, very contained. She also claimed that Oscar was a very heavy drinker and he would sometimes physically abuse her and slap her when he got drunk, which is really not cool. Um, so occasionally the kids were allowed to like ride their scooters and stuff in the hallway. Occasionally they went to the doctor or the dentist, but other than that, they didn't leave the house. And like I said, some of the neighbors didn't even realize they existed because they just never left. And the neighbors that did realize that they were there just assumed that they were in like witness protection or something. They didn't question it. They just thought like, oh, they must be, something must be going on. One year, they had a record year and the children were allowed to leave the home nine times. Um, but some years they didn't leave at all. Once they got as far as a holiday in Amsterdam, but they slept in tents. So it, was, it wasn't really a vacation. They didn't really see anything. These children were just prisoners in their own home. And it's so sad to think about that they were just locked away like that. The world basically came to them through the DVDs and the movies that they were watching. And they really just learned about life through TV because they just didn't have that real world experience, which is just so sad to me. So they say that they learned about, you know, morals and things like that from films. They learned about the importance of family from films like The Godfather and things like that. They had to learn it all through film because they weren't allowed in the real world. Their favorite was Quentin Tarantino films. They really liked dark, violent films because again, they were not exposed to anything like that in their real life. So that was so far out of their realm that it just struck their interest, I guess. People who meet these kids today are always very impressed by how articulate and well-spoken they are because they were basically raised by movies. As expected, these kids are also very naive because they really weren't exposed to anything in the real life, which is expected for somebody who is learning life through the cliches of cinema. Like obviously romance is very dramatized and 
you know, everything is dramatized for movies. You would expect them to be naive and to think that the world is covered in sunshine and rainbows. Like there are certain formulas to movies. Like there's always going to be a beginning, a middle and an end. And there's always going to be uh, some type of resolution. And real life is not like that, uh, of course. We all know that real life is not like the movies. And I think in their adult life, they're gonna struggle really hard to understand that. But I think um, the beauty that they take away from the way they were raised is that, you know, they aren't cynical and that comes with real life experience. It taught them that human beings are flawed and it's okay to be flawed. And it, you know, human beings are very complex, but there is a lot of beauty in the world and you just have to look for it. And I think, that is the bright side of being raised the way that they were raised because you don't always see the sunshine and rainbows when you're living in day-to-day -day real life. You really do have to look for it sometimes and it's not always gonna be sunshine and rainbows, but the sunshine and rainbows are there if you look for them. What they did learn is that every good prison film has a great escape. Mukunda, who is the second youngest child, decided that he was gonna devise a plan to escape. I think they started to realize that they were living way differently than what normal people would live. It came to a point for them that they didn't want that anymore. So in 2010, they really started to realize that their life was so much different from regular people. Over time, they began to get more and more curious. So it was kind of a gradual, a gradual thing, but one morning, Mukunda decided that he was gonna go out while his dad was out getting groceries. And he put on a creepy homemade mask that was similar to the one from the Halloween movies, if you've ever seen Halloween, it's very Michael Myers. He put on this mask to hide his identity because he did not want to run into his father. He was terrified of being caught. So he put on this mask and he ran out into the streets at 15 years old looking like Michael Myers to try to escape. So he ended up out there on the city streets of New York and he stumbled into a few stores, I believe. Which like, good for him. He went on a little adventure and he decided to get frisky. Naturally, in the Michael Myers mask, shoppers were a little alarmed and employees were a little alarmed by his appearance and thought that he was somebody who was just mentally unstable running around the store. So <laughs> they called the police. He was scared and he was also raised not to make eye contact or talk to anyone, so, when police were questioning him and asking him, hey, what the heck are you doing, you weirdo, running around in a freaking Michael Myers mask? He didn't say anything. He was just dead silent. He did not do anything. He wouldn't answer their questions. The police thought that he was mentally ill because he wasn't answering any questions, which not a great thing to assume. They ended up taking him to a hospital instead of taking him to the police station because they thought he was mentally unstable. And he remained in the hospital for a week before he was returned home. So when he returned home, the father was obviously angry, but he accepted it. And at this stage, you assume like, okay, maybe the police might intervene here. No, think again. The parents were not investigated at all at this point. No investigation whatsoever. They just gave the kid back and were like, there you go, bye, your kid must have run away. Cool, have a nice life. And they just left it at that. And um, there's really no law that states that you can't keep your kids at home as long as they are taken care of and schooled and they are taken to the doctor and cared for. But um, social workers did decide that the three youngest needed to see therapists. They decided that they needed to see therapists for a year because they assumed at this point that they had developed some kind of psychological damage from being locked away for so long. This grand escape had kind of broken the father's grip. They started to kind of venture out more. The boys started to realize that the real world really wasn't as scary or threatening as their father made it sound their entire lives. So they were like, really dude, like you kept us locked up for this long and it's like, it's fine out here, it's normal. There goes 14 years. They like to go out in their little Quentin Tarantino outfits and get dressed up and all go out together. They all eventually began to go out on their own. Though they still refuse to interact with anyone, which I think is weird because once they went out there and realized it was fine, like, when you think that they'd be like, hey, how's it going? How's your day? No, nope, nothing. So on one trip out of the house, they ended up meeting a filmmaker. And at first they were like, we can't talk to you. We can't talk to strangers. She noticed that they were shy, so she tried to engage with them. And over the coming months, they came to kind of trust her through their love of films and that's kind of how they were able to connect. And she kind of watched in amazement as the boys would reenact some of their favorite scenes from certain films and things like that. And she was just kind of really 
drawn in by their love for TV and movies and film. And she really was able to discover their amazing life story. And she decided to do this little docu-series. And she saw that as a way to get them into the film industry and give them a life that she knew that they would love based on, you know, the thing that tied them to the real world their whole lives. So she gave them this amazing opportunity to do this documentary and put them in the film industry, which I think is so cool. How amazing of someone to do that for these kids. So the producer christened them the Wolf Pack and that's what they were called just because of their, their image and you know, how they always stuck together. They said that they definitely come off a little feral when you speak to them um, and they always stick together like a pack. And the cadence of their speech is not quite right because they didn't have experience conversing with normal, regular human beings other than their parents, which is crazy. Even their father had agreed to appear in the film, though he thought not a lot of it made sense. And the producer said that she didn't want her film to come off too judgmental, and she really tried to be more kind to the father than he probably deserved. And the thing that really blew her mind was that these kids are just the sweetest, kindest, smartest kids. And they're curious and they're intelligent. The thing that really blew her mind was that something with these kids was clearly done right. And the kids really attribute that to their mother. A lot of people have a hard time believing this story is true. I don't know why they wouldn't believe it. Crazier shit happens all the time. Look at 2020, this is a wild time. Some people think that the details were stretched like the length of the time that they were actually kept in the apartment. And they also wonder if the producer who had met them had hyped it up just to kind of make it more dramatic for the film purposes. I don't personally think so. I don't see why they would lie about it, but I don't know. Nowadays, these kids are living fairly normal lives. All but one still lives at home with the parents. They have friends, one has a girlfriend. Most of them have jobs, which three of them are in the film industry, which is, how cool is that? The two youngest have changed their names to Eddie and Glenn because they wanna be rock musicians. Though the father obviously does not rule the roost anymore. Only one of the children still talks to him and it is Bhagavan who is one of the oldest. Some of the kids defend their father, saying that he was just trying to protect them. They say that they don't hold it against him because, you know, it's what he thought was best for them at the time, um, but it's obviously certainly no way to raise kids and they realize that now. Okay, I'm back. I filmed um, another video on the Patrick Star one size collection, the visionary collection, so definitely check that out. It'll be up on Friday. So basically the kids live with no regret from their childhood. And the best part of all to them is that they actually now get to watch the movies that they love so much as children in the movie theater, which I think is incredible. I think it's just so awesome that they have such a positive outlook on what happened to them. And I think it's really cool that they were able to kind of overcome it and something great came out of it. They actually have amazing careers in the film industry. They have this whole documentary, so that's really awesome for them. I hope that you guys liked this story. If you did, give this video a big thumbs up down below. Comment and let me know what you want me to do for the next Wicked Wednesday, because I always love hearing your suggestions. They really mean a lot to me. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more Wicked Wednesdays. I will be doing more, especially with spooky season coming up. Like I said, I have the one size review coming on Friday, and thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.